Hello again and welcome to Big Data and AI Toronto. Um, so this session again is we were talking about um, a cybersecurity issue that we are all facing today. Uh, nowadays it's a big challenge. And for that, I am also talking today uh, with Mr. Jim Pagiamsis. He is uh, an author, uh, um, writer, and also a podcaster. He's also my business partner for like the past five years. Uh, his work was in digital marketing and social media. And since he became my partner, he's got himself somehow involved into AI and cybersecurity. So uh, Jim, welcome. Uh, this is your first time in um, at Big, Big Data and AI Toronto. Yes, it is. Thank you very much, Hisham. I really look forward to uh, uh, sharing some insights uh, on this topic. Yeah. So the topic today we're talking about is hacking the human mind, the rise of social engineering security threat. So let's dive in. So that's me and my uh, Jim. We're a couple of handsome dudes. We're going to talk about this topic today. Now, let's talk about a very important thing that started happening. So, you know that during COVID, everybody said that the, the hacking or the data leaks are going to rise up. But what happened in the beginning of COVID, like let's say like the first three months uh, in, in 2020, uh, the thing in, is that the, the hacks and the cyber attacks became less, as you can see here, because, and this is what, what uh, you know, the data breaches dropped significantly in the 2020 quarter, because according to Mr. Ms. Eva Vasquez, which is the president and CEO of the Identity uh, of Theft Resource Center in the United States, that organization are, have become on high alert looking for signs of cyber attacks. So it became more complicated for attackers to come and physically, uh, you, you know, do, uh, uh, do that hacking or, or cause the data leaks physically from the servers. So they have to look into other options. And one of those options was social engineering. What is social engineering is the art of manipulating people so they gave up information or confidential information about themselves. That type of information that criminals are seeking I can vary, but when individuals are targeted by the criminals, they're usually trying to trick them into giving them more like something like password, bank information, social insurance number, uh, computer security, uh, uh, information that they can install malware or other stuff. So they come and gain their trust somehow uh, to give them very personal information that they can use against them. And what does a social engineering attack looks like? It could be, it looks like an email from a friend or an email from another trusted source or distress call for help. Like someone sends you like, oh, my mother is dying. Uh, my father is, uh, and I lost my father last year. My mother's dying, I need some help. And so you give them some information or your credit card number or something like that in, you know, in a, a like a, you're trying to help, but that's what they're going to use against you. So many people do not know that this was an actual social engineering thing. So there are three types of tactics that these guys are used. They're in person, and this is one of the most dangerous because the personal chemistry in, in people could create a trust easily with people that are not trustworthy uh, through phone, you know. Somebody calls you and tells you I'm from the CRA or I'm from this bank or whatever. And then the digital, which is like kind of like email or, or a, a text message or something like that. And both of those, oh, sorry, sorry, three of those, uh, you know, like they, 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 use, they use your emotions to, 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 to come and, and it, it either make you fear something or, you know, like, feel sorry for someone so that they could come something. Remember, uh, and that's what I wanted to talk to you about a little bit, uh, Jim, when we talk about when this COVID started and we were talking too much on the phone at the time, and it was a big bit of a rise of those phone calls from the CRA. I was like, oh, you're in a big trouble. You can come here and you have to pay for the CRA or you're gonna be in big trouble or the, uh, uh, the, uh, the help from the government, uh, I think, uh, CERB and, and, and that stuff. Do you remember we were talking about that, right? Yeah, it actually happened to me. Uh, a few, I got a few loose calls as well, and so did some of my friends. Yes, they definitely uh, increased. There was a lot of, uh, I got a CRA call a couple of years ago, actually, uh, even before uh, COVID. But uh, yes, uh, they seem to have uh, come back again in 2020. So uh, that is, uh, and I can yeah. say myself and other people did get those calls. 
Yeah, and, and you remember just calling me about one call that was like really like a legit call. And you, you just, you didn't do anything, but you called me and said like, can you, can you tell me what is it about? And I told you, this is definitely a prank call. Remember that one? Yeah, I remember, I remember. Yeah, so I mean like, it's, I mean, I probably you got lucky because you know someone like me, but a lot of people do not have that someone to talk. So uh, I believe like what we, what we talk about is the awareness is very, is very important. And what this is what we talked about in our podcast is uh, remember that one many times. Yeah, we've, we've talked about uh, uh, this misinformation and, and privacy in the 21st century. So, yes, we've talked about these topics. Yeah. So, uh, again, uh, the types of so social engineering attacks come in, in things like we call them uh, phishing. There's called spear phishing. There's vishing, smishing, and mining social media. I'm, I'm just going to go through them. Uh, and we're going to talk about some examples because, like, phishing is like an email that sends you and give you some information about yourself and they ask you for, for something. And most of these, as you can see from here, are about financial services, come from something that, that pretends it's from your bank or from PayPal or from anything that you use, your credit card or something uh, to purchase and they, and they give you some information so that they give them more. Now, spear phishing is also phishing, but it's more targeted. They, they, they might give you, they might hack into some leaked information from somewhere and they would send you information that, oh, you have done this purchase on that time with, with this last four numbers of your credit card. And that's something that they stole from somewhere, you know, and that, that, that's like spear phishing because it's targeted to you and has very information. And so you just start doubting yourself or giving them trust that they, they don't deserve. There's also something called phishing, which is voice phishing, which is like through phone calls. This is also very, uh, uh, you know, very dangerous because if, if specifically if the, the, the one in, um, on the other side is not a bot or a robot call, it's a human, the human voice might also create that trust or that fake trust so that you will be more inclined to believe them and trust them. There's also smishing, which is like, Phishing through text messages or SMS that when they send you all of that, also sometimes from the CRA or sometimes oh some relative to you, uh, some of, um, of your relatives died in Africa and they have like this million of it, millions of inheritance and we need some to give you some act to, to get some action from you so that you will get all of those money. A lot of this happened like all the time, but during COVID it was like so big. There's also mining social media, which is like. They go to your social profile, they collect a lot of information that you don't know you were giving for free, and they pretend they know you by, by, by collecting all of this social uh, information about you. There's also man in the middle attack, which is like they hack into your computer while you're working on it, specifically when you are on a public, like in, you're in a library or in a coffee shop or something, and they can see everything you do on your uh, um, what do you call it, on your uh, laptop or your phone, even the credit card numbers that you get and all of that is, is, is does happen all the time. Now, uh, you know, there's also man in the browser attack, which is not, they don't hack your machine, but they hack the browser, but the same thing. So, um, I don't know, you remember, we also talked about, like, we're telling people, it's, it's okay to connect to public Wi-Fi, it's just don't share personal information or financial information, they're called public Wi-Fi's for a reason. They're called public for a reason, you know? Jim? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. We, we talked about, you know, it's something, uh, we talked about this in the uh, privacy uh, many times and even in person. And yeah, it's just public for a reason. But I but I really believe that, uh, you know, they're, people are aware of it, but they're just bringing their guard down because they're just going through their day. And I think yeah. that's important that we keep reminding people through these talks and all that, that you have to not abuse that or use it too often. Yeah, and, and uh, you remember when we, when we saw that book that you wanted to surprise me, but I bought it before, it's the book that's called Targeted, which talked about this social media hack, the big hack of social media, the, uh, uh, what do you call it, on Facebook, and how Cambridge Analytica used our information against us in many it's, steps, like one of them was, was like U.S. election and Brexit and even it, Canadian it election. Yeah, well, I guess you're right. I, I, did, I did eventually read it. But 
at the end of the day, what I'd like to get tell people quickly the context is there's a lot of great books. Target is on there. There's one called Weapons of Math Destruction by Kathy O'Neill. And the only reason we're mentioning these these books is for you to to look into them. Their resources. But Cambridge Analytica did some very uh, horrendous, horrendous horrendous things. And I'm not going to ruin it for you because I want I I'd rather people read the book. But I mean, it was crazy. What they did, they swayed elections, ladies and gentlemen. They swayed opinion. They swayed people's minds. It, it was like it was bad, but when you read it, and and then they made there was a movie that movie that came out called The Great Hack, with yeah. uh, she was in it. But you know, these are these are some of the material that's out there, lo- available in your local libraries and books. So we're just using that as context. That's all. I just want to yeah. make sure we're, we're clear here. And 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 just I wanted to remember pe- to remind people that. 620 and 30 something thousand Canadians were, were were in that league and that's yes. one league of many leagues and we've just heard about a Facebook scandal a couple of days ago where the, we know that they actually don't give a damn about their customers and this, and this is recent this is just last week yeah and, and and it was like it was like I mean like it was shocking, but at the same time it was not that shocking, right? No, it was shocking. You know, I I I, I fortunately I didn't see the whole thing, but I I watched it online, and it is shocking. It is shocking to to see that they're aware of the problem and they're not doing anything about it. That's what the shocking part is. And they they have hired those people to do those studies, and then when they looked at them, they just ignored them, <laughs> right? I mean, this is this is as, again as you said, we're we're too much trusty. We don't give too much trust into yeah. those platforms. Yeah. While uh, we saw what is happening, but we are uh, we are actually submitting to social engineering while we are totally not aware what it's doing. But we not we hear we hear about all of those private stuff like oh we don't have any other option. Well, you do have option. Don't share. That much online, right? And I, and we thought, you know, the only thing I had to add, Hisham, I, I let me for a few seconds, is we do we've done so much more of this, uh, even before COVID hit. We've become a sharing society, um, you know, on Facebook, on Twitter. It's become something of a complete tsunami of 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 sharing. It, it's gotten way out of control. Yeah. So, uh, go ahead, continue, continuing with with uh, with yeah, this, because <laughs> I want to I want to talk now in numbers, uh, okay. the impact about of social engineering attacks, and as yeah. you can see, over a third of phishing attack targets user of financial services, which means uh, one employee will have power to see our financial data, they give their information, and all of our financial data is in the in the hands of hackers. Uh, also, there's a loss associated with the security incidents in the finance sector increased by 24%. That's only in 2014. You can imagine what is happening right now. Financial services encounter security incidents 300% more frequently than other industries. This is our money. This is our credit cards. These are things that we rely on those entities to protect for us because we cannot keep our money in a shoebox anymore, right? And, and we, have, we still all have all of that. And it's us who are giving the information or some people in that industry. So 48 of companies that say that social engineering attacks cost them more than $25,000 per yeah. incident. That per is incident. not a small number, but only, as you see here, but only a quarter of those companies are ongoing training to prevent social engineering attacks. What would you say when you hear that? They know that it costs them, but they don't, you know, they don't give enough budget to train their employees on that. I mean, like, isn't that like, I mean, like you could, you could spend much less than that on training your employees and preventing all of this. <laughs> you could, and this is, this is why, um, you know, I think it's important that you're giving this talk and I appreciate you allowing me to be part of it. Because at the end of the day, what even what uh, Francis Haugen said is that they had the guardrails in place and they didn't use them, ladies and gentlemen. And this is exactly what Shisham talking about. They could do, but they're not because they're more concerned about their profit than they are about doing the right thing. Exactly. And this is why talks like this are important because now yes. it's on us 
to be aware and to know what we're doing, what we are sharing with those entities so that we don't share much, right? I mean, to protect okay. ourselves, it, it's come to us to, to be our own guardians, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, and I, I believe the, the books we talked about, the, there are a lot of documentaries there. I mean, like, go and watch. Yeah, there's a good go one. And read. Yeah, there's a, a one called Coded Bias um, uh, by women. And uh, the, the, one of the ladies that was in the dot was actually from the University of Toronto that she did some work with. And Kathy O'Neill from Weapons of Math Destruction is actually featured in Coded Bias. It's a fantastic film. And I know we're talking about these, but these are resources. I'm going to say it again. These are resources. We're not just, we're not promoting these. Please don't misunderstand. Be very clear. These are resources for you to do, to check them out, to see for yourself what's happening. Okay? Exactly. And and these are just examples. I mean, if yes. you don't like what we be saying, just go and <laughs> and watch something like that. It's, yes. It's what we know, but there's a lot out there. And these are just examples. So go and watch. I mean, like, we also heard about Pegasus software, which was spying on people. And most of it happened because people were just li clicking links on WhatsApp that were implanting something on their phones, right? You remember also when, when you told me about the uh, those WhatsApp messages that you were getting and the SMS, which have those links, and you say, like, from banks that you've never even have any account with, right? <laughs> yeah, I don't have an account with any of these banks. I was like... Even text. I was getting texts too. Yeah, text messages, WhatsApp. Yeah, I mean that that is that is that's going crazy. And and uh, you know that's again on us to be our own guardians. Uh, so that was the impact of these attacks. Now let's talk about how to protect ourselves from these uh, social engineering attacks. I like. And that. by the way, <laughs> it's it's not that difficult. I mean we talked about it many times. Me and, and Gemini create strong <laughs> passwords. Can I, can, I on, can I chime in on this one? Can okay, I chime sure. in on this one? So uh, uh, it's going to be a little comedy corner. But my, I have a younger brother, and he he has um, warped me on this. And I think Hisham knows this. His his passwords are like 15 letters long, ladies and gentlemen. 15. You know, I've, I've gone to eight. Okay? 15. And, like, I told Hisham this, and he was like, and what's your point? You know? <laughs> but I, hi I highly recommend. I have a book. I have all my passwords. Please, this is the one of the strongest things that I want. I really, that's why I appreciate Mr. Shaman allowing me about. This is one thing. Please, no one, two, three, four. No Q W E R T Y. Please use, have a book, a hard copy book, and write all your passwords in there. I know it's old school, but this is the strongest recommendation. Please. We have another recommendation besides the physical book, but, at, but the idea here is also creating. A strong password, you know, yes, a real I agree. password. I, I agree, I agree. Yeah, and avoid common <laughs> obvious password, as we just said. Yeah, like sorry. Your, your I, stole my th I, stole your, I stole your thunder, sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, it's fine. And this is, what, this is why I wanted to bring you, because you've been with me uh, on this route, and I remember we talked about passwords, and I was the one who told you, <laughs> stop putting those passwords. They could be hacked in a heartbeat, yes. remember? Yes. And... Yes. You know, there are always, here we can just tell you, that there are a lot of people to, to remember complex uh, passwords and create, create them like a story method uh, or do like acronyms or the Loki method where you create a scene based on location, you know, uh, like um, I like, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, ice cream from uh, Starbucks on Blur uh, and Blur on Dixie, for example. So. These are like some stuff that you can easily remember and you can shift like uh, uh, capital letters, small letters with, with special characters and you can remember it. It's not, it is not that complicated if you thought about it. Besides, don't use the same password everywhere. That is, that is very important. That, that, I, yes, I agree. Yeah, so these are also steps to protect yourself from, a, from, a, from <laughs> a social engineering. It's like when you receive something, an email or text message, first of all, be cautious. See what the source is. Is it? Is it? Is it? Does it look like the source that they send it from, or does it look suspicious? Spelling errors. Sometimes spelling oh errors God. is no. Sometimes spelling errors are not because they have they're stupid or they're doing errors. No, because they want to get away from detection of the AI detection, so that they do those spelling errors so that they will avoid uh, detection by AI. Now, anything that asks you for an urgent action, 
might be suspicious. Also, links. We were just talking about the links that we, they were sent from CRA and all of these things through our text messages and all. Remember that? Uh, check the from address. So if, if it says adobe.com and you just uh, have this this Adobe logo, look at this the, uh, the uh, address that comes. Is it come from something at adobe.com or, or not? And of course, if someone asks you for a personal information, you should be skeptic without thinking, you know? Uh, that's that's that, you know like I think this is like very very uh, basic stuff right and here's the other another stuff to do from that what scammers and social engineers are doing to you they also they always request for something of value of you they also want to keep the matter of secret or privacy like oh you have someone who died from your uh, relatives in Kenya or whatever so I'll just keep it secret because there's a lot of money in it they need to take you an urgent action like now. And just pay us like $150 for the fees and then you will get the millions from your inheritance. And they approach you from a position of authority, like if it's an executive or a lawyer or a software mechanic or something like that. So all of those are signs to look at so that you know that this might be uh, a social engineering attack. Now, um, AI, how can AI help this? AI now can detect deep fake videos. We know what deep fakes are. It can detect fake reviews, it can detect backdoors and man-in-the-middle attacks, it can detect malware downloads and email and attachment. Many of the antivirus are using AI for that. They can detect phishing and spear phishing emails. Uh, so AI could help way more than we can, and we should also invest in AI researches into, into doing that. Um, is that was it. I need you, Jim, to tell us, like, this is how you can communicate with me and Jim. I need you to have, like, uh, we have like about uh, three minutes. I want you to just tell tell somebody about the experience of learning that stuff uh, through the years. You know, well, at the end of the day, um, uh, yes, uh, you know, it wasn't a thing that I was interested in. Now, the reason I was is I like to learn. And, um, you know, the, the area for that was becoming prevalent in the media. And, uh, you know, I like to, you know, uh, like I said, Hisham, I've known her for five years, but it was on my own terms. Hisham never said, oh, you got to learn it. No, it's just my own terms. So uh, and the one thing I'll be honest with you is the covers of these books were just insane, <laughs> like targeted as like a grenade, you know, the weapons of math destruction, you know, is, a, uh, you know, it's a skull, you know, <laughs> it's like, it's a, it's a skull with, uh, you know, crossbows. Um, but at the end of the day, is I think we have to be more aware of what's happening. And, you know, there's great books out there. There's documentaries. There's solid information out there. And it's learned a lot to be more aware of myself. And uh, so that's why, for me, uh, if you love to read, there's lots of great books. You can watch movies uh, on you know, whatever streaming service you have. So um, that's what the thing is. But it's also to be conscious that the world is changing. Um, you know, I've been teaching social media for a long time. This added another toolbox for me to for people to understand it better. We talked about it in our podcast. We talked about privacy. We talked about crypto. We talked about misinformation. These topics are still important. Look what happened with Facebook, ladies and gentlemen. This is very fresh. So um, that is why uh, I've done it, and I continue to do it. Um, and I think I encourage you that to implore you that um, this is information that's out there in your local library, your local bookstore. Go in and learn more about it because your information at the end of the day, your information is your information for a reason. And I think we have to be that. And one more thing that I'd like to really um, think is, yes, be careful using public Wi-Fi. Yeah. Especially. It's very important. So with that, I appreciate Thank you, Michelle, for having me on today. And just be more aware and cognizant it when you're using. Yeah, so I guess what Jim is trying to say, because he doesn't come from a technical background, is if I can do it, you can do it, right? <laughs> okay. And, uh, All right, yeah, that, that works. <laughs> yeah, I, awareness is, is the key. Yes. It doesn't matter what industry you are in. This is, a, this is a public awareness. I believe now everybody has to know it. Uh, so thank you, Jim, for being here and give the, our audience uh, your own um, uh, personal you. experience into this. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Uh, you can contact me or Jim through our Twitter accounts or anything. You can find us everywhere. And uh, 
this is this is it for, for this session and we're going to take your questions out.